Hello again, everybody. This is Harbinger. I want to give you a heads up on what my next redstone project in Minecraft is going to be. At the moment, my animation studio is going to take a back burner to this project because, uh, well, partly because I was getting bored with it, partly because this is going to be so much more fun and I'm really excited about building it. What is next is I am going to tackle building a working Pong game in uh, with Redstone. It's going to be capable of being, <clears throat> excuse me, capable of being one or two player. Uh, if it's two players playing, each will have separate controls up for up down to move their paddle up and down on the screen. If it's single player, then the paddle on one side of the screen will be replaced by a solid wall of torches so that you'll basically be hitting the ball against the wall and uh, returning it as many times as you can before you miss three times. That uh, That is the plan though for anybody who is not interested in me trying to give a half-assed technical explanation of how I'm going to go about doing this you can stop watching now um, because that's what the rest of the video is going to be. And then here we go with my attempt at explaining how this is going to work. I'm probably going to be rambling quite a bit because I only have a rough idea of how this is going to work and I'm not very good at explaining things until I've actually built them. And even then that's questionable. But what, we're, what we are working with is the same 10 by 10 grid that I used for uh, my animation studio and a couple of other projects. What we're going to be doing is on the far left and the far right side is where the player paddles are going to be. Um, each of them is going to be three pixels high, one pixel wide. Since we only really need to track the middle pixel as far as position uh, to control the movement, there is a range of eight possible positions that the paddle can be in, allowing us to completely control that by using a three-bit counter that's capable of counting up or down. And that'll be fairly easy to set up. Um, then each player is going to have a basically a controller that is going to consist of an up button and a down button so that they can move things up and down the screen. The ball itself is going to travel across the middle section um, eight columns wide and then uh, ten rows high. I'm going to do that a little bit differently than I have done uh, things before since I'm only going to need to have one pixel active at any given time for the ball. Instead of doing a full decoder, what I'm going to do is set things up so that uh, the ball position is actually controlled by two independent counters that share the same common clock. Um, what I mean by that is that the X position is still going to be limited to a uh, range of one through eight. So the X position will be tracked by a 3-bit counter. At the same time, the Y position is going to be tracked by a 4-bit counter uh, that's limited to uh, ranges between 1 and 10. Then each pixel on the screen is going to be lit. Um, well, it's basically going to be activated by, a two, by separate two input AND gates. That way, once the X and corresponding X and Y coordinates are active, that individual pixel will light up. For each X and Y, there's also going to be a separate bit controlling, well, indicating the direction that the ball is moving. Uh, that determines whether the counter will count up or down, um, depending on, you know, depending on, depending on how it's supposed to be moving. Once it reaches the boundaries of the top, bottom, left, or right of the screen, then the uh, then the directional bit will be will be flip flopped, so it'll uh, essentially bounce. Collision detection is going to be the uh, the most fun part of this to set up, and I think I've found a nice easy way to get around that. Rather than actually doing it mathematically and uh, and having a system in there that compares the x and y coordinates of the ball with the y coordinates of the center of the paddle simply going to make it so that once the ball reaches the X or the X is uh, once it reaches the max or the minimum range on the X axis it's going to check and see if there are active inputs on that pixel of the uh, of the Y coordinate for the uh, for the paddle if that makes any sense 
That way I don't have to worry about, uh, you know, since I'm only going to be tracking the middle pixel of each paddle, I don't have to worry about checking paddle position plus and minus one and uh, doing a bunch of comparators. I could just basically splice in, uh, basically splice in eight different possible AND gates. Um, now for for each paddle position, that's the part that I'm going to have trouble uh, trouble explaining until I've actually built it because I don't physically have a picture in my head of how that's going to look. But uh, the way I have it mapped out looks like it should uh, looks like it should be efficient enough to make the system work. Likewise, uh, with the collision detection for the bouncing at the end, if uh, the ball reaches the maximum or the minimum on the x-axis and the pixels for the paddle are not active then it's going to register that a point has been scored and since we're already tracking the direction that the ball is moving with a separate bit whenever play, whenever somebody's scoring is indicated then uh, who gets the point will be determined by the direction state of the ball on the x-axis So. I think it's probably going to be a match to three points, uh, so each player's score is going to be kept track of by a separate uh, little two-bit counter and then displayed in binary with torches. So after each point is scored, those counters will increment, and then once the match point is scored and somebody has, uh, you know, has scored three, then it's going to essentially lock up the entire game and do some kind of flashing animation wherever the player's scoreboard is, indicating which player is won. Once, uh, once a point is scored, there is going to be a round reset button in between the two controllers. Um, what that'll do is, after, because after a point is scored, it's going to do, uh, do a similar locking of the system. Once the round reset is hit, then it'll reposition the ball in the middle and leave the paddles in the same location that they were before. Um, since we're only going to be repositioning the ball and not resetting everything, uh, we will essentially be able to control whether the player that was scored on or the player that was that did the scoring is the one that receives the ball first. So it's automatically going to automatically move into the direction either of the player who scored or of the player who did the scoring. I'm not sure which way I'm going to program that in there yet. Then the <clears throat> excuse me. Then the master reset, which is also going to be included, um, is what's going to unlock the victory condition logic. Reset the ball position. That one will reset the paddle positions back to the middle as well. And uh, probably going to leave it so that it doesn't affect the directional um, the directional state of the ball. That way, if you forget who ended up winning or who uh, who scored the last point, it uh, you know might seem like it's a little bit random as far as which way the ball goes at the start of the match, but that's kind of uh, that that part isn't really all that important anyway. But that is a quick rundown of the logic uh, that I've that I've figured out so far to make this work. I'm going to get started on building it building it here as soon as I get this video uploaded. Um, obviously, it's going to be a pretty easy game. Uh, the ball is going to be moving relatively slowly. It's always going to be moving in a constant diagonal direction, so it's going to be pretty predictable. Um, but either way, it, either way, it'll be fun, and it needs to be done because it can be done. So might be able to uh, to tweak with the speed of the uh, of the clock as well to you know make the ball move a little bit faster and make it a little bit more difficult the problem is that uh, with there being so many different multi-bit counters involved in the system if I have it doing too much at a time then uh, the system is going to think that the ball is in one place when the screen displays that it is you know a couple of uh, couple of cycles behind which will make actually getting your paddle into the right position awfully difficult so again uh, once I have everything set up and working I'll get that all all tweaked as much as I can um, it is going to be capable of uh, one player or two player mode again uh, going to have a switch that 
will constantly set the right side of the screen to have all of the paddle pixels be in the on position so that essentially the uh, non-existent player on the right will never miss a return so that way you can play around with it in single player I'm building this one in single player so um, I'm not sure when and how I'm going to get around to actually testing this with two players I may have to either put the controllers close enough together that I can run back and forth and hit them fast enough or I may uh, may throw this up on a on a local server and and try doing it that way but we'll see what happens with that um, I'll probably either send out some bulletins or maybe uh, make some partial videos along the way while I'm getting this built just so you guys know uh, where I'm at with it know that I haven't given up on it good chance too that uh, I'll just wait until the end and post a step-by-step uh, -step on how I did this just to show you the process of the build but probably gonna end up posting a couple of videos in the in the meantime um, doing these videos and throwing them up are a good way for me to still feel like I'm playing Minecraft but take a break from the actual build and the uh, mind melting logic and logistics of setting things up so either way that is what is coming I have no idea how long it's going to take or exactly how complicated it's going to end up being on paper it doesn't look like the build is going to be near the actual physical build is going to be nearly as intensive as some of the some of the other projects I've done but uh, there's a good chance that I'm dead wrong on that since I'm gonna have uh, 82 input AND gates to wire in there, that may be rougher than I think. Or I may cheat and use uh, MC Edit to take care of that. But Either way, I will keep you updated. I hope, uh, hope this sounds interesting to you, and if you actually stayed with this video long enough to listen to all the explanation that I tried giving, I again apologize for the rambling. But. Uh, there it is. I will keep you posted, and as always, thank you for watching.